audio. Hi. Okay, welcome back. All right. So, um, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you are all doing well. I am sorry about that little itty bitty audio mix up. Um, I was just talking with Susan um, in the chat, and I was thinking we could draw this Tillis Whip Spider. It's kind of a really crazy, awesome specimen. Plus, what we're looking at here is actually its shed skin. So, um, there is actually no animal inside of it. It is just the exoskeleton. And this, what we're looking at, is actually a picture I just took with the microscope. So, I can actually move our specimen over. Um, this is uh, the shed skin of our Tillis Whip. I still have the pins around it holding its legs. And admittedly, it is likely already dry. It's just now that um, now that it's there, leaving the pins is going to be the safest thing for the specimen until I know exactly what I'm going to do with it. Because I can't put a pin through the specimen like you can with anything else because it's hollow on the inside. So I have to find a way to safely keep the specimen. And I haven't figured that one out yet so now it's just on this board and thank you so much I appreciate that it took me a minute to get all of the legs nice and even and the uh, the whips along the front um, come and they cross in the very center and that makes me really happy I'm all about the uh, symmetry of specimens now um, uh, Susan had asked if you could see the live specimen, and so I brought our friend, the Taylor Swift Spider. Um, in theory, I could encase it in resin, but I wouldn't want it to be my first specimen that I encased because I wouldn't want to mess it up, and I know that like bubbles can be a difficult thing. I'm thinking I might just end up putting it in a box and like putting it on some type of mount with some super glue. Yeah, but this is this is the live spider and you'll see it moves very very fast. So it's one of those um it's one of those arthropods that I love to share with kids and show kids, but it is not something I would let a student hold because these specimens have definitely ended up on my back before. And you see he's using those really, really long whip-like legs. We actually call them antenna form legs because arachnids don't get antenna, right? So the, with the very little eyesight that they have, they, um, they need something to help them know where they're going. And so they use these really long, awesome legs to reach around and check where they're going. Are they fragile like tarantulas? I would go kind of both ways answering that question. Yes, they are kind of fragile, but they are significantly less likely to fall. So a, uh, a tarantula is going to, can just run off your hand. Um, and if you tried to hold a tarantula upside down, the likelihood is it would fall off. There's a couple of species of arboreal or tarantulas that are used to climbing around in the trees that you can hold upside down, but most of them, you can't hold them upside down. They would fall and they would hurt themselves. And tailless whip spiders, they prefer to be upside down. That is their kind of natural space. So anytime I turn this, uh, turn this cork bark up so the so that the whip spider um, is on the top. He's going to be trying to feel around the edges and eventually will zoom around to the bottom. Especially if I increase the light on him because then you'll be like, what's happening my friends? So you'll also notice that they're a lot more thin than a tarantula. Um, this really, really thin body makes it so that, I mean, even if they did fall, it's not like they're going to crack open their abdomen like a tarantula might if it fell from a higher, from a height. Yeah, super duper duper flat. Um, and that's something that you're not going to see as well on the specimen that's pinned, so I'm glad we pulled this guy out. But yeah, as flat as a piece of paper, really. <laughs> and when they lay their eggs, they actually carry their eggs on the bottom side of their oh, bottom side of their abdomen. Wow, so fast! 
Um, and so you see how, like, it could be an issue if one of these animals accidentally ended up on your back and you were the only person trying to care for it. Like, getting it back into its home is a little bit trickier. Hi, fairy tale! Welcome! Yes, it is a cre crevice dweller. So, a lot of times in the, its natural environment, um, there are a lot of, like, stone and rock piles. And so what this, uh whip spider is going to be doing is kind of crawling into really, really tight rock spaces um, so that it can kind of hide a little bit. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. Alright, so we're going to let her go back now. Um, and I've got her, his or her, I actually haven't, um, I've only looked at the, uh, at the, the molt from the top, so... I haven't determined gender yet, or I haven't determined if it's male or female yet, but um, have two, and the hopes is that once they're sexually mature, I can mate them. We'll see what happens. Might have to go back to the reptile show and pick up a bonus one. So, alright, we are looking at our tail of swoop spider, so I'm going to go ahead and write that on the top of our paper. And, uh, tailless whip spiders like this specimen here are what we call amblypigids. Um, amblypigi is really the kind of the order name for all of these, for all of these animals, but I've always called them amblypigids. Like this. A M B Y. Sometimes it messes me up. I'm gonna grab it really quick. There. So these animals um, are native to a, a large variety of regions, but most of the time those regions are um, tropical or just warm in general. Um, you can find amblypigids, for instance, in the desert. You can find them in Arizona and New Mexico. Um, you can also find them in the rainforest, so, but that's all right there, like in the equatorial regions. That's where you're going to be finding the most of these. And the pigeon. Welcome back, Deb! And is this the first time it's molted for me? This is the second time that this specimen has molted, and I've had it since... I think I purchased it in March. It was closer to the beginning of the year. It might have been February or March. I remember it being really cold. Um, and so it's molted twice since then, and it's been growing at a really decent pace. Do they keep molting indefinitely or just a, separate, a set number of times? So insects are going to have a set number of times that they molt into adulthood. Um, but with arachnids, a lot of times arachnids, um, these incl amblypigids included, are going to molt indefinitely. So they are going to continue to molt even after they've reached adulthood. Uh, the issue actually with female tarantulas molting after they become adults is that um, if a female tarantula mates, uh, then she has that sperm packet and she has the ability to have eggs and all those things, but if she sheds her exoskeleton before she like lays her eggs, um, when she sheds her exoskeleton, she also sheds the sperm packet away. Um, so if you have like a female tarantula that you want to mate, you kind of have to time it to make sure she's not about to sh shed, which is wild. 
I am so glad that everybody is back and healthy, and I am sorry about missing those two weeks that I did, um, but we are all back, and I'm very happy about it. So let's go ahead. We're going to start moving the specimen around. We're going to start drawing it. I was zooming in and checking out some different features earlier, and honestly, I have never looked. Today is, was my first day looking at this specimen underneath the microscope, and I was really excited about some of the things I was seeing because of especially the eye clusters. I'm a big fan. Um, you're going to see it in a minute. Um, but there are these like little clusters. There are like these clusters of eyes rather than having individual eyes that I didn't know before. So we're going to do this. Um, keep in mind that uh, I know, let's go ahead and do it this way. I know it's difficult because I can't show you the entire specimen at the same time underneath the microscope. So what I can do is take this image really quick and make it really big. And if you want, you can screenshot it for, um, you can screenshot this for kind of ratios and checking out the, the body shapes and sizes. Just now that we're looking at it so big, keep in mind that you need to leave a lot of space on your paper for the legs. We got this, guys. There we are. Perfect. I'm excited. All right, so um, I think that I'm gonna start with this, uh, with the first section of its uh, body. We're gonna call, the first section of its body is called the cephalothorax. That's a mixture between head and thorax. So cephalo meaning head and thorax, obviously is the same word. So, um, but, what we're looking at, because we're looking at a shed skin, you'll see that the top is kind of off center a little bit. You can almost see into the body of this uh, of the specimen. And what we're looking at is actually the carapace. So there's this top piece of the whip spider that pops off and then the whole body squeezes out through that hole. And I just made sure to put it back on top when I was done. Um, I thought we saw a tail of swift spider last October. Has it really been that long? You know what? I would believe you, Susan, if you told me that it was... I thought that it was sooner than that, but it's possible that they've been around for that long. <laughs> yeah, the crabs look, it, it does have a very crab-esque um, look. And it's because of those, it's because of those crazy claws. In arachnids, those claws are called petty palps. They're modified petty palps. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm just going to leave Ambla... Pidget on the board. And we're going to start sketching because I keep getting distracted and chatting with all my new friends. All right. So um, I think when I start my sketch here, I'm just going to be starting right around here, the flat part of the carapace, and then working my way around. Admittedly, I think the carapace has a little bit of a heart shape down here at the, at the bottom of it. But let's see, we're going to pull it back a little bit, give us room for all the legs, make it kind of small. All right, so uh, uh, for anybody who is new here today, uh, we always do a very kind of light sketch with just the basic shapes first, and then we go back over it um, and kind of solidify some of those lines, and we'll zoom in so we can change the shape of the lines if we need to a little bit. But we're going to start with this nice flat line up here on the top and then kind of widen it out and come back towards the center. So we're making that carapace shape. 
And keep in mind that it is an arthropod. And a characteristic of all arthropods is that they are symmetrical. So whether you have a butterfly or a spider, they're all going to have that center symmetry line, which is really nifty. Let's see. I think I came out a little bit too wide, so I'm going to pull it in just a little bit. This is a really good time to kind of play with your lines a little bit. Make sure you've got kind of the right shape happening here. Um, and then I'm going to imagine that the carapace is perfectly placed. I don't think that I'm going to do that, like the separation gap. There's a part of me that wants to see if I can fix it, like straighten it. I cannot because it's actually connected right there to the top of the abdomen. Okay. So I'm going to scooch our specimen down a little bit so that we can also see the abdomen while we're working with it. There we are. Very good. Now, that abdomen is nice and narrow. Um, it's uh, the top of the abdomen right here is connected to the base of the carapace, which is nifty. Um, and it looks very triangular up at the top, but then once it gets to its widest point, which is right about where our angles of our, uh, of our carapace come in, then we're going to make it kind of round down really nicely. And it's okay for your first sketch to be, to be kind of crazy, maybe a little bit off. That's okay. We're going to be fixing it as we go. So we've got kind of this basic body shape. Now, I was trying to get a good look at some of these legs here. They're just so nice and long and kind of more spindly that I feel like maybe what I should do is leave it more like where all of the legs are coming out. No, stop. There we are. Okay. So this first leg is, uh, all of the legs are connected to the carapace, all right? The first leg is coming down and out. And what I'm going to be doing on my sketch is just giving myself kind of like little stick legs to work with so I know about how long the legs are going to be. So I'm going to have it come off the bottom side, come down. Honestly, it goes past the end of the abdomen, and then it's going to go out and then back down, and I'm probably going to run out of all of the space, but that'll be okay. So uh, that's going to be our hind leg. The next leg coming up is going to be coming out, down, and then more in a forward direction, and mine is going to go off the page. That'll be fine. Um, this next one is actually the last pair of walking legs. It's coming out here down and it's probably going to follow kind of that same angle from the previous leg. So we've got this very crab-like structure happening right now. And then we have one more leg, but it is not a walking leg. It's that antenna form leg. And it's this crazy one right here that goes all the way out, comes all the way up and back in and crosses over. They're curled up there. And I'll even show that to you under the microscope shortly. Uh, but we've got one, two, three. This is the le fourth leg. It's coming out, going way up into the up, 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 and then crossing over and scooching back down. And you know what? I think it's just going to kind of circle this amblypigid word. <laughs> We're going to do something in that, something in that range, I'm thinking. And then, right here in this big, awesome open space, that's going to be where our petty palps are. What types of legs do they have? Um, 
they have three pairs of walking legs and one pair of antenniform legs. So antenniform would be spelled like there might be an E in there. No, maybe not. Antenniform? Something like that. That's the front pair of legs that they use to feel around. But then I would call them walking legs, and the scientific term for a walking leg is ambulatory. Um, although they do run really, really, really fast. And so, if somebody was like, nah, uh those are running legs and not walking legs, running legs are called cursorial. So, you probably could argue between those two. Um, whether they're walking or running legs. Do those lovely markings show up on the abdomen of the living whip spider? It looks darker than this molt, though the bright lights on the microscope can also change things. Um, yes, those colors are on the live specimen, but you're right, the live specimen is darker, uh, mostly because this the exoskeleton now is very, very thin, so you're seeing the light come through it a little bit, but also there's not a lot of water. The, the, the pinned specimen or the, the exo, exoskeleton is really dry now, whereas the actual friend is living in a high humidity environment, so it'll stay just a little darker overall. Ooh, but upside down. You know what? I, uh, there is, uh, I have, I have two whip spiders, and the other one has a molt in its terrarium right now, and, um, I'm gonna have to pull it so that I can see, um, see, see what I can do about spreading it. Alright, so our legs, I'm just going to give us a really, really rough kind of just these square pedipalps up in the front. So we've got the pedipalps are going to be coming out from right behind these angles here. And then they're going to be, um, they're going to have all types of awesome spines and stuff. But we're doing this nice um, kind of rough light sketch first. And then it's going to curl all the way over, and you have a whole lot more spines happening here. Um, and then there's like an awesome little spiny doodad. Something along this line, but a lot straighter than that, because they're not hooked. Kind of more like... I got distracted by all of the spines. You gotta make them at least look straight. Something along those lines. to think if I know any insects with antenna form legs. Um, so I've never heard of anybody calling a pair of insect legs antenna form legs. But um, there is a species of midge. Midge? mayfly. There's a species of mayfly that I saw once. It was a really spe small species of mayfly, and it was holding its front pair of legs. Um, it was holding its front pair of legs, which was darker than all of the other pairs, and it was kind of waving them around like they were antenna, but I still don't think you would consider them, them antenna form legs, because I don't think that they're doing the same functions. 
Now, I don't have the ability to do as much m movement of the specimen today because I can't just pick up a pin and swoosh it around. But uh, we can check out the front of this carapace here. And what I found the most awesome when I first threw the specimen underneath the microscope was I believe there are three clusters of three eyes. So you've got these three over here on the left. You have one, two, three over here on the right. And from this angle, we can only see two. But I can almost imagine one being kind of forward facing, even though we can't see it, because it would be on the other side of this hill right here. Because each set of these three, they're not only clusters of three little, almost simple eyes, but also they're on little mountain, they're on like little hills so they can see in many directions. A giant Dobson fly. I love Dobson flies. And if it had those giant jaws, that means you found a male, which is super cool. Yeah, that's why I changed, and you said that you thought they might be running legs because they were so long. And yes, they do run very fast. So I, I could see the argument towards calling them cursorial legs. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and start getting some of this sketch in. Uh, we had originally kind of drawn this straight line across, but now you can see there's this little divot on the inside. So I'm just going to really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with this line here, and I'm going to go up and over that line. I'm going to come back down to base, and then I'm going to go up again. Kind of like a, a little wavy M, or maybe... A little roller coaster for the front of our uh, tail swoop spider. And the cool thing about zooming in and seeing more details is it's also going to give our sketches a lot more details because we'll be fitting in more details into smaller spaces, which is fun. All right. So, also along the front of the carapace here, there are those series of kind of little spines, and I want to get those into my sketch. I'm not sure how detailed you're feeling tonight. But I think that those are kind of awesome. And it also makes him look kind of like he's wearing a crown. Um, I do find it interesting that the left and right, uh, that the left and white, right uh, groups of eyes each have one that are pointing towards the center. But the top one doesn't have one pointing in this direction. It points forwards. Um, just like the angles of the eyes I think is really cool. So let's see, we're going to grab one, and keep in mind, we're only looking at the very front of this carapace, so uh, right around here where you've got the, the pedipalps coming in, that's about where as, as far back as these uh, simple eyes are. So we've got one, two, three over here, um, one, two, three on the right side, and then right here in the center, I am just going to draw the two that we can see, but if you would like to draw the other one on that side, I would not stop you. I also love those kind of red patches in between the little simple eyes. Um, it's, a, it's a really pretty color I haven't seen in very many tail swoop spiders. I'm just trying to get us a really, really clear image of the edge of this carapace so that we can fix any of those and to get any of the, oh, wow, it's so pretty, any of, like, the details and the coloring here all fixed up. So, um, I'm pretty happy with my overall kind of shape here, I believe. I like the right side better than the left side. I might fix right around here. Um, but I do notice that the, li the external line is fairly wavy, so I'm not going to make this super duper straight. I'm going to kind of go over and above the line just a little bit as I'm coming around, just so that it doesn't look as, as perfectly even as I originally had it. And 
and I always, after I get some of those darker lines in, I come back in and erase some of those sketch lines that we don't need anymore. It'll just make the lines that you've just made pop out a lot better. All right, if you look at the very center of the carapace right around here, you'll notice a divot. Um, that's going to be almost like a pillar that goes through the entire body. Um, it's almost like a center structural piece, and it's what the carapace pops off of when they are when it's getting ready to molt. So if you want it, it looks like the divot in the center of this specimen comes down and splits at a Y on the bottom and then almost has a line like that kind of coming up. I don't know why, but sometimes I see a close-up of an insect face and they remind me of doggies. Aww! I could see that. I think that there are a good number of bees that look like puppies. Um, like, a lot of the a lot of the native bees that have a lot of hair on the face, I I could see them reminding me of puppies. <laughs> I wouldn't call these guys derpy, but I mean I can kind of see where you're coming from. So what almost looks like two spines, that's just a little bit of the integument. Have I used this word with you? I don't know if I've... Oh, right, so the integument on an insect is essentially the, um, the skin-like parts in between the exoskeleton parts. <laughs> so, um, if you have multiple plates of an exoskeleton, you need to connect them somehow, and they're not connected with more exoskeleton because they need to be able to bend, right? The integument is the bendy part in between the exoskeleton, uh, in, the, in between the exoskeleton, and you can see a little bit of that integument right here to the whites off of the sides. That is just like used to be kind of squishy, very mobile stuff, um, and it's what allowed kind of the carapace to pop off, but now it's dried, so it's hardened, and it's not going to flex anymore, but that's what it used to do. Welcome, John! I'm so happy to see all of the new faces today. All right, I think that what I'm going to do is narrow this point here because I want to yeah we're gonna do it this way okay um I want to narrow my point here I might be about to make accidentally make my specimen bigger but the legs are already going off the paper so we're good all right, uh, we're going to start here fairly narrow, and I am seeing three segments until this widest point here. So let's see, if I go find the very center, there, that's better. Sometimes I have to kind of refocus a little lower. All right, so if I find the very center and I come out and make this type of point here, I'm going to have three segments. There's going to be one. Sorry, I need to fix this. This one's going to bug me if it's not right. There we are. Okay. So, um, it's funny because it looks okay, but then I look up at the camera and it's not even. There we are. Okay, we're back. Now, um, we've got three segments. There's one right up here, and it's going to be nice and low. Um, and then we have another one that almost looks like, <clears throat> instead of just coming <laughs> straight across, um, it has, oops, I bumped her. Uh, 
Um, it is almost this M shape where it kind of comes and wraps around the both of the edges here. All right, and then the third shape is going to be more in this direction. And then that is essentially the widest part of our abdomen, and it just gets narrow from there. Um, let's see how many more segments we have. So I'm going to zoom out so that we can get a seg an um, abdominal segment count. Like my favorite insect, the Malaysian jungle nip, if you look up close to their face, they look derpy. That's true. The jungle nymphs are amazing. I love them very much. I had a jungle nymph that I was raising um, as a part of an institution, and she was just always so angry. She hissed at everybody. She was not a, not a happy camper. All right, so... Um, I'm making my abdomen just a little bit bigger to kind of fit in with the shape, but I'm looking at one, two, th one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more abdominal segments. But those ones at the end are really, really tiny. So of substantial size, you've got the one, two, three, four, five that have that really pretty color design and that are of decent size. So we're going to just light, I'm going to go through and lightly add these five. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to shorten them all just a little bit. And that is why I do it lightly at first, because I want to make sure that all of the segments are going to fit just the way I want them to. That'll work for me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along the top. I'm going to bulb out kind of away from that line just a little bit. And I'm going to give it a line over. And I'm going to do that every time so that the, abdomen, the, the abdomen isn't like a perfectly even shape. It kind of has these um, convex. Um, it's kind of convex in between the individual segments. And then we have... So we've got these five segments here that are going to have one, two, three, four, five that have that color pattern. And then what we have at the very end of the abdomen are a couple of weird shaped segments. And I bet if I knew a little bit more about them, I probably could tell the male versus female just from this image. I'm just not that good yet. So um, if I take it here, this is almost like an upside down M. That next segment has that little divot in the center here. And then we're going to call that three more segments. One, two, three, right here, very end. Very good. So we've got a body happening. And I'll go ahead and zoom out for us now. I'm going to add some of these uh, some of these colors. And personally, I think that, that those first two color spots at the very top, they look a little bit like eyes. You can almost see the you can almost see the pupils. I don't know. They definitely look a little bit like eyes to me. I feel like a lot of times um, insect like patterning could also be a uh, Rorschach, you know, like whatever you see. Oh, spiders scare you. Well, maybe, um, maybe learning a little bit more about them will make them less scary. That's what I tell my kiddos sometimes. All right, so we've got that abdomen all taken care of. Um, I'm thinking we start from the front of the body because I really want to draw these petty palps. I will admit, I think that these are so cool, and I want to get them in the sketch. 
So I'll go ahead and put the word putty pelt back on the screen. So um, if you don't remember how to spell it and you do want to label your drawing as you're going, Swift spiders is that they are actually not spiders. They have spider in the name, but whip spider is one word. That means that people, it reminds people of spiders, but it's actually not a true spider. This animal also does not have any venom at all. All right, so even if it was to bite you, it wouldn't hurt. Um, these guys can poke you a little bit with those pokey parts of their petty pelt, and that feels like being stuck by a razor, like being stuck by like a rose thorn, not a razor, like a rose thorn, um, just like being poked a little bit. Um, I have to admit, even though I love spiders, if there's one near me and it moves. Well, admittedly, I don't know if you guys saw it, but the whip spider made me jump a little bit when it moved so fast towards me a little earlier when we had we were playing with the live specimen it was uh it it moved pretty quick it, it startled me a little bit um i i have a little bit um all right so i have a hard time deciding what my favorite insect on the planet is because I just think that there are so many cool insects that I just kind of have a hard time choosing. But um, I have kind of decided that if I was going to be an insect, which is a little bit of a different question, but if I was going to like choose an insect to be, I would be a dragonfly because they get to breathe underwater and they have gills um, and they're like top predators. And then, when they're adults, they can fly. And there's a species in Australia that can fly up to 59 miles an hour, and I just think that that is the coolest thing. All right. So let's get this putty pelt taken care of. What I'm seeing is a first segment that almost looks very triangular right here at the very base that we're not seeing much of, but I think I want to add it to give me where my leg is starting, and then I'm going to be coming out from here. Um, I am noticing that this line in between these first, um, in between, I'm going to say the second and third segments of the petty pelt um, is going to go more straight across, like kind of hair um, is going to be straight across like a horizontal line. Oh yeah, I said that once in class. You know, I uh, I I have decided on dragon. Dragonflies are just so cool. You know, my other fun answer for what I would, for my favorite insect is the next one. I feel like it's a cheating answer, but it it's the best answer. All right, so the outside of the petty pelp here is, it's lacking a lot of spines, but there is kind of an inward curve at the base of it. So I was trying to make sure I got that in. Um, and then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come straight across with this top line, and then I'm gonna add the spines on. Um, we see that there's two keep bumping the styrofoam. We see that there's two really long ones kind of here at the base of the petty pelt. But then as you proceed forward, these spines do get shorter and shorter, but they are always pointing inwards. All right. Um, coming around the top, uh, this top one is fairly straight. If you if it was going to curve at all, it looks like it might even curve a little bit at the beginning and then straightens out. And then once you get on the inside of this petty pelt, make it nice and wide at the end and then narrow it down in the beginning. 
So you've got this kind of, it almost looks like a club looking piece here, but it's going to help you with um, adding some of these spines coming off too, because then we've got Um, cause then we have, let's see, we could even count them. There's the light. One really small one at the base as in that spot that it's like in the process of growing. The next one is about three times that length and is coming out right around here. Then you have the longest one that's going to come like way down, really impressive spine. And then all of the other ones are going to radiate kind of off of this thing and get smaller. Let's see, we get two more. One. And this one's getting smaller. And they get smaller and smaller after that point. And so you've got, oh, that's so cool. All right, now we're going to add the segment that's kind of underneath. I'll go ahead and I'll zoom down on our, on our specimen here a little bit. All right. So we've got one segment that's kind of coming down in this direction. And it's a little bit behind those, and it's kind of like behind those spines a little bit. But then that nice long end of the petty pelt that extends almost all the way to the mouth. Oh, fancy. I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy with what's happening here. And I know that normally I only do one side of the legs, but I'm definitely doing both sides of the petty pelt. So you're just going to have to hang out with me for a minute while I. Um, sketch the other side. <laughs> um, maybe I can answer some more bug questions. Let's see what you guys have. Susan loves butterflies. Ruby spot damselfly. Aww. You know, my favorite beetle to collect in Pennsylvania I don't know if it's fair to say it's my favorite one to collect. My favorite, what I think is the prettiest, we'll go with this way. What I think is the prettiest beetle in Pennsylvania is the, uh, is the dogbane beetle. And the dogbane beetle is uh, finally out and about. I did see one maybe last week, um, which means, and I also saw a cluster of their eggs. Now, uh, dogbane beetle eggs are really funny to find, and they're even more funny to, like, point out to kids, because um, when dogbane beetles lay their eggs, which is always on the plant dogbane, so if you see dogbane and it has little piles of what look like dirt on the bottom sides of the leaves and you're like what is that it's actually dogbane beetle eggs so they lay their eggs on the bottom side of dogbane plants and then they poop on them <laughs> um which i think is hilarious um and it helps them protect their eggs right so um uh, I think that they're super cool. And, I mean, dogbane beetles then continue to use their frass or their insect poop as a defensive mechanism because then they're the same beetle grubs that use the, uh, the poop umbrellas. That, I think we've talked about those before. Moths are your favorite. You know, I had just pulled out a really pretty polyphemus moth to draw with some of my students, um, some of my uh, scientific illustration students, and nobody came to class on uh, um, on this. Was it this Wednesday? But we'll have to be doing it. We'll have to do it in two weeks. All right. So I've got a very similar shape. So I'm gonna start coming in here. Oh, 
Well, I think I like my right one better than my left one because I spent a little more time on it, but I think the idea comes across and that this specimen is going to look awesome when I finish the rest of the legs. And yes, it always comes down to butts, and that's okay. We've accepted that. And this is where those little antenna form legs cross. I wanted to show you because they do cross right here in the very, very center. And they're so thin, they almost just look like a little string or a little fiber. And there are very, very small segments in the very ends of their whips. You can see, oh, we can see a couple of them right there. So you can see kind of as I zoom across, there are these little itty itty bitty segments and that's what makes the end of their antenna form legs so mobile is because the segments get smaller and smaller and smaller which makes it easier for them to curve and turn around corners and stuff. All right, so what we want to what we're actually going to start talking about now are segments of the legs. I usually see what I call huge wood moths because they look like bark but they are so pretty. Um, I wonder how big they are and if when they open their wings are they yellow and orange or pink? Are they brightly colored when they open their wings? Um, when we're seeing these, all of these segments here at the base, um, spiders do have a coxa. That's going to be what, where their legs are very much connected to. I do not think that we can see the coxa on this first pair of legs. Second pair, see the coxa is this piece here that you can see just a little itty bitty piece of. On the hind legs, you can see more of it. But I don't, I think that it's kind of hidden underneath the carapace here would be where the, uh, where the coxa is. That's essentially the hip bone. I'll go ahead and type it for you. Coxa. And then the next one is going to be the trochanter. This is essentially a knee-ish segment. It's longer on one side than the other side and it helps those uh, turn. So you've got the coxa, you've got the trochanter. Then you're going to have the femur, which is the nice long one. Got the nice long segment, that's going to be our femur. And then you're going to see right here where the uh, where it bends before it becomes another long segment. I hope we can get it right here. You see there's like a smaller segment here that looks, that looks almost knee-esque. That is the patella. So coxa, trochanter, femur is kind of what we started with. And then we have patella, tibia, metatarsis. All right, so that's our patella. The tibia is the nice long one. You have the metatarsis here, and then the tarsus, and then the tarsal claw. Look at that cute little claws at the end of his feet. I love it so much. Look at how cute these are. Here, we're gonna zoom in. Oh, we can't see it as well in that one. We're gonna look at this one. It'll, it'll, it'll refocus with light in a moment. There we are. Sometimes when I, when there's too much white light, my camera freaks out and overcompensates. There we are. Look at the little tarsal claws at the bottom of his feet. I love them so much. <clears throat> they just have brown wings and they're flying. Pretty. I mean, that's really awesome too. Okay. Alrighty. So I got to talk to you about the segments of the legs, so we're going to go ahead and see if I can get as many of them here. 
kind of like this. And I'll leave it here for a minute so that we can start our legs and then we'll follow them through, I think, is what we're gonna do. All right, so coming out right around here, we've got the trochanter. Coming right out around. Then from here all the way to that corner that we had, nice and thin because this is that antenna form leg is that femur, really nice and long. Now, um, right here at the corner, we knew that there was that other little, really small kind of corner segment that we call the patella. So you've got a little corner segment. Then the tibia is gonna go nice and long, way up here to where we had originally planned. Just make sure that it stays nice and narrow. All right, so you've got the tibia happening. Now, after the tibia, you have the metatarsus and the tarsus. Um, and a lot of times in like many arachnids, there's only one tarsus. But I believe, in at least in the antenniform legs, we saw how many segments there are. So those segments are all tarsal segments right there at the very end. So we're going to do the metatarsus that's nice and long. But then once we get to right about in that center, and we start to kind of cross, and I'm gonna erase amblypigid. Sorry, I just don't want it in my way. Um, and we start to kind of roll in and cross over, and that gets really narrow, and then it comes back. All of these in here are little segments. And you can give it a whole bunch of little cross sketches right there. All right, there we go. All right, so that's the first one. And we're gonna do that again but um, at different angles. And because we already have our lighter lines follow, we can probably just follow these kind of lighter lines. The, uh, we do have the coxal segments on the last three. So make sure you give like little rectangular boxes that you're gonna connect your trochanters to. All right, and then I'm gonna give you a Kind of like the the trochanter is going to help you angle the femur in the correct direction. So if you notice where you're where you want your femur to go, then you're going to kind of angle the angle the the trochanter here in the direction you want it. All right. Now this one is going to be just a little different because I came out a little too far for my liking. I'm going to pull it this way. All right, and then we've got the little corner segment. That's our patella or our knee. And then the tibia is going to be the one that goes off the paper this way. It goes wee. And we then we forget about it. All right, next one, the femur is coming down in this way. And then our knee segment kind of points it more in an upward direction. And that one goes off the paper too. Good. Last one. This one gets to stay on the paper. We have the coxa, the trochanter. We are adding the femur here. Longer than the abdomen, remember? Then the patella and the tibia. Oops, that got really wide. Keep it narrow. And the tibia. And then the metatarsus and the tarsus on the hind legs are not as long as all of the other segments. I'll go ahead and move it over so you can see. Those last uh, two segments aren't very long. So we're just going to kind of go down one and two and then give it those two little hooks at the end of its legs and call it a tail a swift spider. This is so cool. I am very happy with this sketch. I think that I might come back and add some of the colors to the abdomen now, but let me check and see if I have any, I got focused a little bit and I wasn't paying attention to the, to the chat.
You need more giant silk moths in your life. You know what? I do have a decent polyphemus specimen. And it has crazy awesome antenna. It's a male. So we can pull that out. Oh, I love Luna moths too. All right. So I'm a big fan of the big sphinx moths. And also the, um, well, sphinx moths and silk moths. Um, I have way more moth specimens than I have butterfly specimens, and my students are always like, why don't we draw more butterflies? Um, but it's just because I have so many more moths than, than, than them. Um, but I know it's something I've got to work on, because I have many people, actually, that have been asking me about drawing butterflies. And I know there's a good number of you on here that would love also to uh, to spend at least a little bit more time with butterflies. That's really cool. cool. Are there hairs on the tibia and metatarsus too? Also, do you think the common name came from the fact that it has eight legs? The fact that it's called a whip spider? I think that people just, well, it gives it, they have the name whip because of the antenna form legs. People think they look like whips. Um, and I think the spider just comes from, yeah, having eight legs and looking like a spider a little bit. Um, are there hairs on the tibia and the metatarsus? Yeah, give me a minute. If you zoom in and focus on the tibia, and the metatarsus, they are covered in very, very, very fine hairs. These aren't hairs that you can see with the naked eye at all, but they are, when you zoom in really close, you can see that they are covered in very fine hairs. So that is definitely something that you can go back in and spend time on if you would like and add all of that, all of that hair or what we would call CT to the legs. You did the national butterfly count. Cool. Oh, Susan, you had mentioned about that second round of Carner Blues emerging too. And I'm thinking, um, so... Next week, oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, next week I'm going to be in Arizona collecting bugs and hanging out with bug people. So, um, next week I'm not going to be around because I'm going to be in Payson, Arizona, hopefully making lots of new fun stories so that when I come back I can share stories of Arizona with you. Um, so the next time you will see me is July 27th. Oh. I'm not going to be here July 27th either. So the next time you will see me is August 3rd. So we're going to be taking a two week kind of, uh, we're going to be taking a two week vacation a little bit and um, 
Uh, feel free to go out and make your own bug plans and come back with your own bug stories. That would be wonderful. And um, I'm going to have to find a weekend to come up to New York because I definitely still want to do that. And I was a little grumbly that COVID stopped me from coming up and seeing you. So we're going to have to make that happen. Um, so I do want to say thank you, everybody, so much for hanging out with me today. I know there are people that are here because it's the end who didn't get to see our fun whip spider who is our, our our living specimen in the beginning of class so here is our friend the tailless whip spider the real live specimen that um that shed the exoskeleton that we have been drawing this whole time so um something that i think that is really cool about this specimen and i wonder I wonder if it'll stay in my hand if I put my hand under the microscope. Let's 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 test something out. It's not staying very well. Let me see. Oh, friend. Oh, cool. It's a little harder because she's making little micro movements, so she's not staying focused. But um, you can see that bright orange spot close to the top of her carapace is actually brighter when she is alive. But the colorations on her abdomen, let's see if I can, they're still there. They're just a little darker, right? Uh, oh, and it's cool that you can see the um, abdominal segments. Check that out. And this is a... <clears throat> I want to show you this. This is a natural pose for these uh, whips. So they'll come out to this point. But then when you have the metatarsus and the tarsus, sometimes, a lot of times at rest, they're going to be creating these little U's, and they kind of hold it over their body. If we look at the other one, it's doing the same thing. Let's see. You can see there's that little U there. And then when the specimen, when our friend here is going to try and explore, then they'll put that antenniform leg out. But most of the time, they're going to be kind of holding it over their body like that. Let's see. Yeah. And then she's reaching out. She says, oh, no, something different is happening. I've got to feel around. Let's see. I was having fun trying to sketch. Oh, yeah. If you go to New York, you should go to Insectapalooza. That would be so much fun. In fact, I know some of the people who run Insectapalooza. So um, it's definitely one of those things that I've been meaning to go and see. Oh. No going up the arm, friend. Now and I'm on my live stream. All right, we're going to be putting her back because she is getting just a little bit too curious about the world around her. I understand, little lady, so we're just going to very carefully transfer her back to her piece of wood, and she's going to go home now. I know I was calling it a she. I'm not sure what gen what if it's male or female yet. She is very jumpy. Yes, true statement. Uh, whip spiders are known for being very jumpy. They will, like... They'll be fine one moment, and then all of a sudden they make a decision, and then they're gone. Um, and so that's why I'm okay with handling her, but never ever another kid. Kids can't hold her. Sadly. Alright, 
right, so I hope that everyone has had a wonderful time hanging out with me and chatting about Taylor Swift spiders. Um, not Taylor Swift spiders, because I feel like somebody um, heard that last time, and that made me laugh. Um, Taylor, Taylor Whip Spiders, not Taylor Swift. Uh, I'm trying to find, sorry, my camera got in the way. There we are. Okay. All right. So, um, I hope that you are all having a wonderful week. Um, because I'm not going to be seeing you for a couple of weeks, uh, go out, have fun, see some buggies in the real world, see if you can ID something, or even send me some cool pictures. This is my email address down here, so if you shoot me an email, I will definitely attempt to respond, and um, and we can have communication. And I love IDing bugs for people, or just seeing your drawings. If you have art that you uh, that you created with me while we were chatting, uh, feel free to to send, uh, send, uh, scan it and send it to me via email, even if you feel like it's not done, because I think that they're beautiful and at all stages. I do teach uh, on a platform called OutSchool. It's for students ages 5 to 8 and 9 to 12. I teach, uh, insect studies and, um, junior bug club and a scientific illustration class. And recently, the kiddos wanted to learn about the black witch moth. So we got, I, uh, I created a class all about this kind of, the black witch moth and where they lived and what they ate. And um, we got to talk about scientific illustration, which was a lot of fun. Maria Marion has some really beautiful sketches of them. And the other thing that we talked about today... We're cream flies. We pulled out. We I uh, I had talked with the students about crane flies, and we just kind of drew, and we talked about their body shape and their life's history and stuff. My microscope is getting in the way. There we are, and their life history and stuff, and that was a whole lot of fun. So um, if you have uh, friends or kiddos that uh, you know would want to talk about bugs, um, you can find that link in the description, and you can have twenty dollars towards your free cl first classes if you go and follow the link. You know the thing. So, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I know that you guys out there um, ha that have been chatting with me are already subscribed, and I super duper appreciate it because um, that it means the world to me. Now, if you have been hanging out with me the whole time and you've learned a decent amount or even a little bit and you're excited about, you know, what... Uh, about sharing all of the knowledge with your friends. This is a place here if you would like. You can uh, drop me a couple of dollars and you can donate to my business. Um, that's Insectopia and I do this. I travel and I teach to, uh, at libraries and schools and I teach online and I do live streams. So if you wanna help support me, that's where you can do that. And if you wanna find me on Facebook or Instagram, I'm over there, right there at Insectopia 2015. Oh, got it all through. Um, this is a place behind me from, um, this is the Salt Flats in Arizona, and it's one of the places I'd love to get back to this year. So I might drive over to the Salt Flats and see if I can catch some tiger beetles. That would be so cool. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your week or two, and I will see you next time. Stay buggy.